Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katoa, he mehitene kita naitu a huriri, mana finawa o tene takiwa. Ko Jenny Bond um, Taku Ingawa, he kaitiaki kaitiaki multituna taone Taku Mahi, uh, kia ora, hui guria matato. So um, kia ora, welcome everyone today. Um, I just want to give thanks to the mana finawa, which is naitu a huriri runanga. Um, of this takiwa. My name's Jenny Bond. Um, when I'm not doing this, um, I'm the guardian of the Urban Eel to Tuna Taune um, Action Learning Program in schools in Puerto Taki. And hope you have a good Hui class today. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Shelley's disappeared. Um, but Simon is going to stand in for Shelley in a minute. So, Simon, <laughs> actually, would you like to join us? Simon? <laughs> Perfect, he's going into role play already. Um, is Shelley Washington. Thank you. And Jenny, do you want to yeah. introduce yourself? Kia ora, um, my name is Jenny Waters, um, so that makes it really easy. Um, Jenny? Uh, I um, work for Environment Canterbury, um, have been involved in the kind of from the conception to the handover of the Stillwater Mobile Resource to Enviro Hub, uh, and Jenny Bond kind of uh, facilitates that. Um, and, but in my day job now, I work with irrigation schemes. So I've been out of the stormwater game for a couple of years, but I love stepping back in and seeing what's going on. Uh, that's awesome. Fantastic. So um, our masterclass today is gonna have um, two parts, oh, three parts to it. Just do a little bit of a call or a little presentation, which we can't cover um, everything off, but we've got some handout notes, which we printed and forgot to hand out. Um, so please take them with please you. Please take you with them. I've got all <laughs> our tips and tricks. Um, so the purpose of this um, masterclass today is to share the techniques, experience um, that, uh, well Shelley, who's left, um, but Jenny and myself have gained and gleaned and been trained in over the last 20, 25 years. What we're trying to give you the um, courage and the skill set to do is to have a conversation about the environment with a random stranger. So someone, yes, I'm glad you're laughing, because that is right, a random stranger, <laughs> not someone like yourself. So someone that you might see at Mitre 10, someone you might see at the local farmer's market, someone you might see at the AMP show, um, someone you might see at Dress Mart Hornby. Because we have been to all of those places. And to have this conversation with them in two to five minutes about changing their behaviour or reaffirming their already good behaviour that helps, um, in our situation, urban waterways. So we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. Um, and how we're going to do that is through a bit of a kōrero or presentation. Then we're going to split you up into two groups, A and B, hence your new labels with A and B. Um, and you'll have a go at the games over here and our big attraction, our big hook. And then the other group is going to work with me on some role play about actually trying to have those random conversations. because. I don't really like repeating sayings, but it's practice, 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 okay? So we're gonna give you some chances now to be an actor and be a facilitator and swap over and practice hooking in those random people to have a kōrero about urban stormwater. Um, so um, I just want to acknowledge that these probably, we're just looking at the rain because this thing doesn't like the rain because there's lots of electronics in it. Um, be all right. She she built it. Well, didn't build it. No. She paid for it. <laughs> so um, she can decide when we need to move it. We're all right. under there. We're, We're all right at the moment. Um, so I just want to acknowledge there's lots of experience already around in this group around um, having those conversations with people. So, but when we were putting the notes together, Jenny noticed that some of the things I had put down as tips and techniques were things that are second nature to her. So she said it was kind of quite useful to actually see them written down again. And for those that are experienced, when you're upskilling someone or training someone up or modelling up that kind of behaviour, then you can go, oh, this is the reason I do this and this is the reason I don't do that. So first of all, we're going to talk about body language. So Simon, who has just been roped in, <laughs> okay, is standing like Jenny in front of this wonderful resource here. Okay, I imagine he's got sunglasses on. Okay, and then we're going to look at Jenny and see what are the good things that Jenny's doing and maybe the not so good things that um, Simon's doing. So what we're looking for is approachable and friendly. Okay, so what are some things that Simon's not doing? 
Well, Simon's doing that as an approach worn friendly. He's got his head down. He's got his head down, he's not making eye contact. Some cultures, you know, you don't want to make a whole lot of eye contact, but that's okay, but you can do it other ways. He's got his hands, arms folded, he's got lots of paper, head down. What else? Scowling. He's scowling, <laughs> really doesn't want to be there. That's what that body language is telling us. Anything else? Coffee cup. Yes, and the coffee. I know we all kind of so probably need a cup of coffee at some stage, but when you're facilitating something like this, please step away, leave the coffee cups behind, or go and have a break. It's really important to have a break because this kind of mahi is exhausting. <laughs> You'll come home and you won't even want a packed cat. Okay? So um, make sure you have a break and eat. Okay, try not to eat your lunch at the trailer. What's um, Jenny's do? Oh yeah, on the phone, texting, <laughs> taking a phone call. Well done. What's Jenny's doing that is more approachable and friendly? Smiling. Smiling. Yep. Not wearing sunglasses. Not wearing sunglasses. Yep. Open posture. Open posture. Yeah, and she's looking. She's looking to engage you. She's looking to hook you in so she can have that conversation. Right. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. got a whole t-shirt. She's not the first one that's picked up. Yes. Yeah. See, yeah, look. He's a third, he's out. Okay? So, yeah, she's branded. Okay? Now, in um, New Zealand, our UV levels are really high, so we're all told to slip, slop, slap. Okay? If it had been sunny, her and I would be wearing hats. Okay? And so we've had student interns come out with us, and so I've actually said to them, look, can you lose the sunglasses and I carry a few extra hats? Plop this hat on you. Okay? The people that you're talking with are probably almost all wearing sunnies. So if the sun is hitting you, just kind of gently manoeuvre yourself around so that they're hitting the sun and you've got the sun behind you. Okay? Awesome. So However, I would just add to that, if everybody hasn't got sunnies, manoeuvre yourself so that you're getting the sun so yep. that they can see you. Yeah, really important. So Judy and I found out that we both worked for the same holiday camp in the UK 20 years ago and this is where we picked up all this information because we were giving each other the same things. We weren't allowed to wear sunglasses in front of with children because they needed to see our eyes and to make eye contact because we were throwing them off trapezes, putting them into kayaks and all that kind of thing so we needed to make sure that they were actually okay with doing that. And as adults we you know, starting to learn to hide behind the sunnies. Okay. So we've kind of co covered off that bit of body language. The other important thing is our face. What is our face doing? Does anyone practice their presentations in front of the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Judith does, well yeah. done. Now the reason for that is, what are our faces doing even right now? You've got a lovely open face, is it, is it Lucy? Yeah. Yeah, yours is lovely, okay? That is great, she's got a great open face. I um, am extroverted, and so when I get nervous, you can probably tell now, is that I start to do with this a bit more. I can't use my hands, and I'm flying around maybe a bit Italian, which I'm not, unfortunately. But I start to do this, so then I have to know that when I'm talking, if I'm approaching someone that's at all slightly introverted, if I go at them all like this, I'm going to scare them. So I have to kind of bring it down. So it's having a when we're doing our presentations, it's actually looking at our face. You know that resting face? There's a horrible phrase. <laughs> <laughs> the first group, someone voiced it, and I was like, perfect, thank you. So it's working out what your resting face is, okay? Uh, my husband has a, um, I shouldn't say it's on camera, um, he has a resting face that is, honestly, looks like he's quite grumpy, and the children have said, are you all right, Dad, at dinner? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine, what's the matter? <laughs> and he's just got a resting, grumpy face. Okay, so I really implore you to look in the mirror and see what your face is doing when you're like, you know, at a stand potentially or when you're talking about your subject. Are you too intense or do you need to actually put some more life into it? Okay, really practice that. Um, and then we've got a whole lot of other tips um, in there as well. Um, oh, what I want to say is like, I'll give you my face for when I'm concentrating. Okay, I want to pick someone to look at. Okay, Simon there. Okay, so Simon's in a, we're in a meeting, and this happened to me at council a few times when I worked there, and I'd be like, oh, I'm really interested in him. You must think oh, this. Or maybe yeah. I look this way, looking at Simon, and I'm like. <laughs> and I come out of that meeting, and people go, God, do you know, you get pissed off. I'm like, no, I wasn't pissed off. I'm like, your face was, and I'm like, oh, damn it. I had that concentrated look on again. Okay, so. I've been on enough facilitation courses and I'm like, I'll be looking, so now I'll be in a meeting and I'll be like, oh, now I've got that face on. 
Okay, I can't change it to because then that's just weird. So I've worked out a couple of techniques. So if you're ever in a meeting with me and I drop my pen, if we're sitting down, that's because I've like, oh, got the face on, drop the pen, put the pen up, reset the face. Oh, no, that's weird. I've been doing it three times and there's a camera. Or you could just go. Yeah. Yeah, that weird. wouldn't be weird at all. No. Okay, or if you've got glasses, or you can just like do something with your nose. That's probably not COVID friendly, but you know, do something to reset your face. Okay, you can reset the face when you've got it on. Okay, right. So we've got our body language and we've got our face sorted. Um, the next thing what we need to do is grab the public's attention. So you need a stand. You need something. Luckily, this trailer is really good because it's so unusual. People just kind of look that way, and once they've looked that way, you've got them. You can then get in with your hook. Okay. The other thing is we didn't always have the trailer and you can't always take it, but the tuna and drains game, people will be naturally drawn to that, okay? Or if you're talking about fecal contamination, why not have big life-size poos? And like, I had this chat with Ecan recently, like, you know, you've got fecal contamination coming, and you can't put fecal contamination up on a sign. You need to talk about, if you're talking about poo, you need to say the word poo, don't you? So we're looking at um, different types of poo, like why don't you have bird poo? dog poo, human poo, and then match the poos. So let's make it fun and kind of a bit quirky and interesting so it draws people in, okay? So we've got our body language, we've got our face sorted, we've got something. The other thing is a map. We all love maps. Not many people don't love a map. If you have up, 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 up high or on the ground, we've got that, we've attracted them in. Now we need to bring them in, okay? So there's a couple of you walking, say Cameron and Susan are walking together. Don't walk yet, don't walk yet. <laughs> so they're going to come towards me. If I go to them, hi, do you want to talk about stormwater? What do you think they're going to say? <laughs> eh, eh, hell yeah. No, we want to talk about stormwater, but I think we must be like the smallest population <laughs> that want to talk about stormwater, okay? So try not to. I know I'm having a bad start when I go, hi, do you want to talk about stormwater? I'm like, damn it, I didn't warm up, okay? The other thing you might try is go, have you got a few, have you got two minutes? What's going to happen there if I go, have you got two minutes? What are they going to say? Seven no, minutes. they're like, you've just given the option to say no. You need to go in there with a line where they can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. But what you've got to remember is that you've, you're being brave, you're courageous, you're playing a bit of a role. But deep down, everyone has said that they want our rivers, our awa and our moana to be healthier so that we can swim in it and we can get mahanga kai, right? That's bottom line. All of New Zealanders would probably agree on that, correct? So what we're doing is trying to have a conversation with them about an action that we can do so that we do have awa and moana where we can swim in and get mahanga kai from, okay? So deep down I'm like, this is really awkward, but this is what they want. They just don't know that yet. Okay, so what line am I going to use? Okay, yeah, right, okay, walk through for me, see if I can do this. Oh, hi there. We're just talking to people about how we can keep that harbour there safe because what we're finding is our beach gratings are going to go down to four. Did you realise any of that? It's not my best line, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do it in front of the camera. Um, but yeah, oh, hi, we're talking to people because the beach gratings have um, gone down. Oh, had you heard about that? No. 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 So what we're finding, and this is where you have tool number two, you either take them to the trader, but this is my little favourite one. Um, did you know that anything that's here, any grot, dirt, knees, dog poo, goes down the sump, into the pipe, underground, and straight to the awa without getting treated or cleaned? Do you realise that? No? And, yeah, hey, that's all right. That's all right, because about 90% of people that I talk to who are under the age of 60 don't realise that. And so then you've got them, okay? You've got your hook in and then I'm testing their knowledge. It's a bit hard here because you guys are all knowledgeable. And then, thank you very much, you guys have that. Um, it's about cooking them in. And then sometimes you might be in a mall, or we were, Martin and I were in a mall once, and we got 12 no's in a row. We're like, damn this, not having another no. So he said, hi, <laughs> people went past. Anyone interested in talking about fishing? You know, chocolate <laughs> fish, and um, if you want to talk about fishing. And that drew some people in. The other thing is, um, it, sometimes you just have to go to bribe room. We've got a quiz here. We did this at the University of Canterbury. Hi, if you enter, um, answer our quiz, you'd go into a $30 voucher. Because you're not wanting to talk to people that are converted, that are like us, that are already know 
what we know and are doing the right thing, we're trying to talk to people that don't know, okay? And what you, you don't know, what you don't know. Okay, so once you've hooked them in, then you need to have a conversation in really plain, basic English so they don't feel ignorant or dumb. So please don't use the word sediment until you know that they are kind of um, a little bit more knowledgeable than the average person. What other words could you use instead of sediment? Mud, mud dirt, dirt, soil. dirt, soil, rot. Okay, what about another thing? What would you use instead of aquatic ecology? Fish. 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 Yep, fish. <laughs> Things that live in the stream like fish, like eels, like tuna. Okay? So you really have to, um, I wouldn't say dumb it down, that's kind of a bit insulting, simplify it. And practice your sentences and practice your lines on people. You need to find your friends that aren't like you, that aren't into the environment, and have a chat with them and get your lines and then keep practicing it in front of the mirror. That would be my top couple of tips. So if you talk to people, if you only practice on your colleagues, it's never going to work. Okay, you need to go find someone. We found someone <coughs> at comms, I think at ECAN, who was new, and they didn't know about stormwater. And so they could practice on her. But you're probably not going to find someone in your own organisation. Or do you think you might have someone in mind? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a couple. couple oh, yeah. I've got a friend, and she said, what are you doing for a job? And I told her, and she goes, all right, I, I really don't really, you know me, I'm not into the environment, but yeah. I want to do the right thing. Um, I'm never going to vote Greens or Labour or Māori Party. I just... I'm just always going to vote blue, but what do I need to make the river cleaner, Jenny? I said, you just need to sweep. I said, I pointed to the berm, and I said, you just need to sweep all the stuff out of the gutter and put it in your red bin every week. And that would be awesome if everyone in Christchurch did that. Because, okay, sweep, that's all I need to do. Thanks. <laughs> and then we start talking about something else. So but that's the kind of people... The eh? And now she pays the gardener for blue. <laughs> 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 you did say she was voting for blue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she does. Um... She did have someone wash out her wheelie bins, but now she's got her husband doing it because they're on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's pretty much it. What we're going to do now is split up into our two groups. So if the A's want to go with Jenny over here, and the B's over here are going to do role play with me, and then we'll swap over. Hello, how are you? Oh, hi, sir. We're, I'm, uh, I'm Rob Burke. Uh, just doing a little chat about uh, stormwater. Do you know much about stormwater in your area here? It's kind of busy, but... Uh, yeah, only just uh, a few moments here. Like, uh, do you do any fishing in the area at all? Yeah, yeah i got a big-ass boat. It's oh, huge. nice, nice, yeah. nice. Do you sort of fish along the shore or anything like that? Oh, I'd like to go out the, yeah. Yeah, I'd go out from the shore, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah sometimes uh, we see guys fishing outside uh, stormwater outlets on the river and uh, on the ocean there. Sometimes a bit of turbulence. Uh, but do you know where, uh, say, uh, the drain over there goes to? Do you know? I never really thought about that. Yeah. So with this system here, this uh, is pretty close to the coast, probably not far from where you fish. So any water runoff from this uh, car park here uh, goes down that drain and through the council's pipes and then out that big outlet, yep. probably where you're fishing. Uh, sometimes the fish come in that area because there's stuff and contaminants. Over there there's a chicken shop and they pour all their stuff down the drain. So is that actually going to the fish that I could be eating? Yes. Okay. Maybe good or bad. I mean, uh, unfortunately, there's lots of drains in the area here. So uh, uh, there's a chicken shop there, and then there's uh, a baker down there, and sometimes you see a little bit of stuff pouring out of there down the drain. So what we're trying to do is just educate people to let them know, uh, particularly if you've got a stormwater drain on your property or something like that, you know, you might be washing your car, it might be better to go and wash on the verge or something like that rather than... Uh, but I, I pay my rates, why isn't the council doing all this? Yeah, they are, they're sort of taking the, the surface water off your property, but it's up to us, I suppose, a little bit to uh, determine what might go down that. So as I say, if you're at your home and you're washing your car in the driveway, uh, do you use soap when you wash your car? I suppose you yeah, would. Yeah, I use a pro, uh, my, more on the boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you might a huge wash it boat. out of the road. Yeah. So uh, what we're trying to do is just get people to think about where they might wash their car or their boat, you know, uh, so it's not near a stormwater outlet. So as I say, all that goes straight down the drain. So there's no it's, treatment? There's, it goes no, there's no, out. no, no. So there's no treatment for some of these uh, stormwater outlets. Your sewerage does. That goes straight to the sewerage yeah, plant. Yeah, yeah. But your stormwater goes directly out to the sea or directly out to the river. All right. Well, is there stuff I can wash my, my huge boat with? Uh, you could.
good. But probably the best place is actually to park it up on the lawn if you can. Oh, yeah. And uh, do it there. You know, that'll be better. So that way the, the soap suds will go right, into the okay. lawn rather than down the drain. Yeah. What else goes down those... Do you want to get out the picture? Can I interrupt? That's oh, going yes, really well, guys. Go. Yeah. You've got this. So that's really good. What I'd say, Rob, yep. is ask him a few more questions. Yeah, You've yeah, got yeah. lots of the answers. Yep. Um, and then I know we're having a bit of joke about the chicken. Yep. But we would all know, <laughs> don't Oops, fall in the treats, um, that the, if they were having issues with the chicken waste yep. in the chicken shop, that that would be going to the sewer. And that would be a perfect yep. opportunity to explain to... Um, your uh, engineer type, yeah. Simon, the engineer, who's a suit on his lunchtime, very busy. Nice suit. Yes. Nice suit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, that he, um, that you know, the difference between the stormwater and the um, yes. sewer. Yeah. So what I would say is, I'm not sure about where you're from in Southland, yep. and it all depends. But I would say, like somewhere in, Cri like for Christchurch, what I say is, unless you're in a new subdivision, yeah. the stormwater goes straight to the Awa or the Moana, yeah. no treatment, no filtering. And the reason we can't put it into sewage is that we would need Bromley, because everyone knows where the poo ponds are yeah. in your local town, would ten have to times. be ten times or more the size. Yeah. So we're just asking everyone to do their bit. Yeah, and then I thank you. And then what we do every time is we thank someone. Judith, can you just get those those lollies? Those are, since we're on film, <laughs> depends if they eat it. Once they've left and had the conversation, what we just say, oh, hey, just want to say thanks very much for you know giving up your time. Would you like a you know chocolate fish? Yeah. And then most people say yes. I would say yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're fasting. It's an afternoon yeah. too. And then we just give people a little thank you yeah. to acknowledge that they've given up their time because they weren't expecting to be stopped they weren't expecting to be on a you know at a farmer's market or on the supermarket uh, you know having an environmental conversation so we just say thank you very much and give them a little chocolate a nice chocolate fish to say thanks yeah, yeah thanks well, judith cool. yeah nice job cool Excellent. well done Thanks, you mate. do you guys want to swap roles now well, the easy bit was picking up on so she was carrying the the tray of paints and so that was an easy inroad like yeah oh, so you're going to do some painting this weekend and stuff. yeah and you can talk about you know, do you, how do you wash your brushes awesome that sort of thing um and then she's like oh but I'm, i already know all this stuff what else so um, scratching my head singing so <laughs> until we got to that point it actually went really well no that's great and that's when you can yeah i just study up in here and just yeah you just have a ideas. quick look at this brochure yeah. they give you some ideas yeah. no but that's awesome okay. yeah cool. No, that's like great. Spot, it? it does help. No, I mean, it is a bit. We are typecasting people, and we are also. That's terrible. Um, but we you know we're looking for visual cues. Um, but I mean, like most people, you know, in New Zealand, still drive a car, so you can always hit them with a. Oh, hi. Just you know, do you drive a car? And they'll go. Oh, yep. So, oh, how do you wash your car? Or where do you wash your car? Because not everyone realises that the car washing places are connected to the trade waste or sewer. Yeah. And that, that means that water is going to get cleaned up to some extent before it's discharged out into wherever. Here it's into um, three kilometres out into Pegasus Bay. Yeah. Is it the outlet that's three k's out? Yeah, underground, yeah. Used to be into Ihutai, into the estuary, but that got changed in the last wee while. Yeah. How did yours go? I found it really hard just knowing how, because she was on a motorbike and just bike on in. <laughs> you don't have to be. So you, uh, you kick her off the bike. Going to a market and finding that opening line. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I found it really hard because, no, like you say, nothing in common. And you could go, oh, nice photo, like, we do wash it. But then I almost feel like straight away you're almost criticising them. If you know yeah, I, mean. I can say. Yeah. yeah. Like dumped, uh, Yes, yeah, yeah, just for, wrong, yeah. It's kind of informing without accusing. You yeah. don't want to guilt trip them. Yeah, but that's a really good point. Yeah, you don't want them to feel like that. So another way, um, how would I approach that? Might be like, oh hi, we're just talking to people about how we can make our rivers um, healthier, mm. and they might go, oh yeah, yeah, or I'm a bit busy, or and then then you can just kind of gauge. Or put it this way, they've had a nice kind of welcome from you, and they're just wondering, you know, um, whereabouts you might wash. You know, do you wash it? Because that's always an option. Don't wash your car. <laughs> Some child, yeah. Don't don't wash, yeah. don't wash your, you don't wash your car, yeah. Okay, and lots of people can't wash it on the grass, yeah. And car washes are getting a bit expensive, but you can go to those DIY ones for about five or ten dollars, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to swap over, and you're going to have Jenny's going to show you the trailer games. This is the Stormwater Superhero Mobile Resource. Um, in 2018, a lovely gentleman called Evan Smith, um, who was really sort of well known in the 
environmental community in Christchurch. He came to both CCC and Environment Canterbury and he kind of said, look, what do you want us to be telling the public? How can we help? We just want some standard messaging. Now, at the same time, Shelley and myself uh, were going to a lot of events. Shelley's actually, um, she's not in the session, but she was in the ones before, but we were going to a lot of events and we had dog poo bags and a leaflet. And these were our engagement tools alongside with ourselves. And it was really hard graph. And we've been doing it for a few years. And, and you know, we didn't have huge um, amounts of uh, budget to spend on things at that time. Um, so the stars aligned and um, Evan kind of wanted this all-in-one resource and Shelley and I both wanted the same thing and so we put our minds together with CCC and uh, co-funded this resource and um, Environment Canterbury kind of said yeah we'll look after it and manage it for its you know probably 10 year or so life cycle. Um, sadly, Evan passed away, um, I think it was a couple of years ago now, but I always think of him when I'm out here doing this um, because it is people like that that kind of sometimes give us councils the, the nudge that we need. Um, so the, the key thing was at the time CCC had done some research um, and it had been random research on stormwater protection and basically um, they found from that research that only really about 50% of folk um, we pollute the stormwater. Um, only about 50% of the residents that they surveyed knew where stormwater went and that it went to drains and it went to the streams and then it went to the rivers. Um, and so we needed to raise that baseline of awareness um, because if we didn't do that, I, I, I feel that we weren't going to get anywhere with our water quality improvements in, in the city. So um, this is what this resource is designed to do. It's really designed to just raise that level of awareness, then give people um, just a few top tips on what they can do to help protect stormwater. Um, so what we have, we have this um, basically these three kind of games. We have a wobble board. Um, and I'll just take you through that. So basically here, and you can come in and have a play in a, in a bit as well and get really st stuck in there. Um, so how I do this, and, and one thing I should say is that the resource is really meant to have somebody to help guide people along and facilitate it. It's not a kind of leave it, go away and let people educate themselves. It's um, yeah, guided education. Um, so we have this wobble board. It, one of the things we knew is that people get a bit mixed up with stormwater and wastewater and often don't know that there's two different pathways. One gets a level of treatment, and I say a level of treatment, that's the wastewater, and one gets no treatment, unless you're in really sort of new developments where it gets some treatment. But we want to protect things at source. Um, so you have a wee marble, this is your water. So just imagine this is your water and you've got your house in an urban setting. So not everybody will be from an urban setting coming and seeing it. So you have to kind of explain that. You've got these different pathways that um, water kind of goes down from your house. So you've got outdoor drains, you've got your kitchen and laundry, you've got your roof and gutter and you've got your bathroom. So what I would probably, I suggest, uh, often I will talk about the pathway first, the different pathways so that they understand that. And I'll say, oh, so, you might want to find out if the water goes where you think it goes. So you choose, choose one of these and they might go, oh, I'll pop it down the roof and gutter. And then let me know if that's where you thought it would go. So tend to take away that kind of them being wrong um, or, you know, so they can just do that in their head and, and then you can have a conversation about it. So I pop it in and I go, oh, okay, it, it goes down the stormwater network. Um, so and then it goes out to the sea and the marbles pop down the end. And then um, the wastewater cycle is kind of very familiar, uh, uh, similar to Christchurch's um, wastewater kind of uh, key points. So we've got the oxidation ponds, which everybody knows as the poo ponds. So that's that. And this one is the tuna. Um, we want the tuna to get to the sea. Um, basically, we have a wee stream and there's a pathway and along the way there might be things that humans do that, that cause the tuna harm. Uh, so we just, when you get to those things, you might hear something and that will give you a clue. So that's probably as much as I say to the kids with this one. And what happens is they go around and they love it and then they'll usually pass something and 
they'll completely sort of go past it because they're going so fast with it. And then I go, oh, what was that? And they go, oh yeah. And they go back and then I go, oh, there it was again. And then I'll have a little look. There's some really cool little pictures. And then with these pictures, you can uh, have a chat about what's going on. So when you have a look, you'll see those various little pictures and you can kind of see the things that humans are doing that may cause harm. And I'll let you just get amongst that. Um, this is the touch screen. You have to hold it until you see that ring. We have a movie and a game. We find the movie when the, the speakers, we need to probably get some better speakers. So we, we tend to just use the game. This first instruction screen, we actually don't use too much, um, but we go straight into it and go, okay, give a little example. You might have a bunch of folk around. Um, so what pollutant comes from walking the dog? We've got the dog there. Um, anybody feeling really brave? What <laughs> pollutant? And maybe you have to explain what a pollutant is. It depends what level people are at. But what do you think? There's a dog poo, there's zinc, there's dirty paintbrushes, or there's cleaning products. Anybody feeling super brave? I think it's the poo. Uh, yeah, yes, I well, come on is. in, Judith. So if you press the button, hold it into that blue ring, then then drag it into that box. Perfect, and you get a nice wee tick. Now, I'm just gonna show you what happens if you don't put the right answer in, because this was just so, oh, I think it's, I think what is the environmental impact of dog poo? It's harmful to stream life, which can eat plastics. And so it says, we've deliberately just said, try again, instead of doing the, uh-uh, you failed. Um, yeah, so it's trying to make that, it's not, a mis it's, you know, it's not a mistake, it's feedback and it's learning and not making people wrong about something that, you know, we know a lot about because it's our role um, and we're paid to know a lot about it, um, but they might not. So, um, yeah, so the next, anybody want to have another go? Because I don't know what it is. Yeah, come on, thank you, that's brilliant. Yeah, so you hold it down and then you drag and drop when you see the, you see the blue, that's it, you can drag it now. Yes, ah, oh, look, there you go. And then it flips to the next one. And it's, what is the solution? Anybody feeling brave here? We've got covered drains and dirt piles, copper-free pesticides, new paint or roof, or bag it and bin it. Anybody? <laughs> Come on, Cameron. Thank you. That's it. Awesome. So once they've got that drag and drop, they're away. And then you can let a little group sort that out and you can move on and sort of just see what's going on here. Um, so they do need a bit of sort of just a bit of an overview to begin with. And then I just kind of let people go in and have a, have a play. So feel free to go in, have a play, look at those graphics. And then also we've got behind you the Tuna and Drains game. Now we have not ripped off any of these games from well-known games at all whatsoever. No, no, that's my disclaimer. And um, this was created before this actually, um, and it was the next up from this. Um, the youth engagement team, uh, Environment County came up with this, and then they sent it out to people who worked um, on events and things and, and got feedback. This is the next version, so I think there's a, a bit more Tereo in the second version and they've changed some of the things that weren't quite so obvious. Um, so each time we kind of try and just improve it a little bit from the feedback that we've got from people using it at events or actually, you know, the, the kids using it as well. So, yeah. So have, have a wee play. Any questions, feel free to come and ask. I've, we've got some, we've got my email in the notes. Um, so if anybody is interested in the more, how much did it cost? Who did you get to do it? Those kind of things, we can send those on. It was actually Graham Christie from Development Engineering. He was an aeroplane engineer by trade before he, he did that. And his workshop, if you ever get to go to his workshop, is just amazing. Uh, it's got lots of gadgets and things that you, yeah. So, and then the National um, Science Roadshow Trust did the graphics for the game. So they, they've both worked together before. Uh, these graphics, um, they were done by Simon Fornley. Um, yeah, so originally it was going to be our communications team. Uh, however, they got kind of swamped with um, work for the council councillors. So we, we had to get Simon to do those graphics, but he did a really superb job as well. Um, hey.